Hi, welcome to another review video. I'm going to be reviewing two airbrushes today. Um, and I'm going to kind of be going back over a little bit of ground that I did in my first review video. So when I first started Raster Maze Painting videos, I did a review and it was a review of the, the Harder and Steinbeck Ultra versus the Iowata Neo. I've got an Iowata Neo again at the moment. And, it, and if you go and watch that video, you'll see that I actually preferred the Iowata Neo, even though it was a cheaper brush. Um, it's the one that's kind of stuck with me since that video and it became the workhorse of my painting business. I ended up with two of them, loved them to bits. I still love them to bits at the price point that they are. Fantastic brush. But I'll show you the brushes I've got to review today. I have, again, the Iowata Neo. Let's show you under here. This is a great little brush. Uh, price points at £68 retail. And I'll go through that in a second. And I'm going to be comparing it to the Io, Iowata Revolution HPCR. So now this is the next one up in the price point. So this was a bit of a birthday present to myself. And we thought we'd try it out and we'd see if there was any difference. So let's start with a Neo. All right, this is one that I've already done. So I'm not going to do like I did in the first set of videos. I'm not going to go through it all. Um, and actually paint with this. I'm just gonna talk you through the brush and what I think of it. So for, from the last video, these are great, great quality products. Um, for the 68 pounds you're paying, the machining, the tooling, the actual make of the airbrush itself is very good. It comes in this case, it's a bit battered now, but it's obviously gonna be a lot more pretty for you. And it comes with two cups. It comes with like the five mil cup and the two mil cup. And these are removable. You can take these off. Let's get this out of the way. You can unscrew this, this cup completely and change a cup to a smaller cup, depending on how much paint you're using. The only problem with that is, is a smaller cup doesn't come with this lovely little paint cap, which I swear by. Whenever you're uh, using acrylic paint, it tends to dry very, very quickly unless you've got this paint cap. Um, and that stops a lot of the problems you're going to have with your brush keeping it spraying well because as soon as the paint starts to film or dry it will clog causing you problems so great design simple to open if you want to access your needle this is how you do it you simply loosen this and the needle will just pull out and this is one of the the main things which you'll notice is needle quality now I think this is a 0.3 needle it may well be 0.5 and I'm talking nonsense, but it's a fairly small needle, but it deals pretty well with the heavier acrylic paints that I'm using. So I'm not using glazes or, or washes through these brushes or like the food colouring that a lot of people use their brushes for. I'm painting with acrylic. So it certainly handles the acrylic paint very well. Once again, opens in the standard fashion at the front, comes with a little uh, um, spanner. You can loosen this, pull out your tip and clean inside. What I will say about this brush now, so now I've lived with this brush for well over a year and I've used it to complete hundreds and hundreds of commissions. And in my experience, the biggest problem these brushes suffer from is in here. Now I'm gonna take this off again and I'll show you. Now it's got a really deep channel here, really deep. So when it comes to cleaning your brush in between paint changes, you don't ever take this off while you're working. This is something you take apart when you deep clean the brush at the end of a cycle, the end of a day, maybe even at the end of a week, because really no paint should have been affecting this. But getting in here with the brush is where I actually found it to be slightly more problematic. And I do prefer this to the, the Harder and Steinbeck we reviewed. It was easier to clean this one, but long-term wise, these deeper channels make it harder to access the internal workings here, which is where you're going to get your clogs. So to kind of cut a long story short, I love this brush. If you are just learning to airbrush, this is a great, great entry level. I can't think of anything better for £68 than this brush. Um, these are available at Weekend Warlords through our, our website, um, weekendwarlords.co.uk. Check it out there. You'll find 
both these airbrushes that I'm reviewing today available on there. But so this is my starter brush and this for any of you that are part of my Patreon or that have watched any of my painting videos, this is what's done all the work pretty much so far, this brush. So it's really good. You do need to help it out at times with a little bit of masking and bits and bobs, but this is a really great, great brush. Lovely to hold, lovely in the hand, lovely actions, well machined. Really, you, you, you can't ask for more for £68. But I'll move on. Now, in the last one, it was definitely the cheaper brush that stole my heart. And it was the one that I kept using. Maybe the Harder and Steinbeck just was too fine and, and intended more for a lighter paint. But I don't use that lighter paint. I use the heavier paint. So let's move on to upside down. Let's move on to this one. Right, so straight away, it's in a better box. I'm going to go through everything because you've paid more money. So it's a bit like anything. If you're buying in a more expensive present, you want it wrapped with a bow instead of just paper. Comes in a really lovely little box. Let's get that open. And straight away, you'll see a test piece of paper. Now, this is what the airbrush can do. Now, this is clearly a much lighter paint type than the acrylic I'm using. So it would have been thin down. Uh, it may even have been an oil based paint. But this gives you an idea of what this brush can spray like. All Iowa brushes come with a five year warranty, which is a fantastic bit of kit. I mean, you don't get that on anything you buy nowadays, do you? It's got its instructions manual, which is your standard thing, how to open it up, advice on cleaning and advice on using it. This one doesn't come with two cups. This one comes with a single cup and it's fixed. It comes with the standard spanner to release the nozzle inside and some lube, which the other one didn't come with. And this is really great, this is, especially when you're taking your brush apart to clean it. So let's get her out and let's have a look at her. Let's get rid of that box. So first things first, it's a little bit dirty because I haven't stopped using it. What I did, a bit like the Neo, is I lived with it. I've lived with this for about three or four weeks now. Um, I haven't used any other brushes. I've just been spraying with this to get the feel of it. Straight away, it's heavier, which is not a bad thing. It instantly tells you this is made from slightly better quality materials. It has this slight divot in the end cap, which just adds for a more comfortable hand feel because it isn't quite straight. So it kind of sits in this recess of your hand where your brush often sits a lot. And like I said, this cap is non-removable. However, this is one of the things I love most about this brush. Now, paint cap, I don't buy airbrushes without these things. They, they are like everything to me. Can you see how big the opening is? It's really, really big. And it's really shallow. It's right there. So you can get into that opening incredibly easy to clean in between colour changes. As you're going to see, because I'm going to paint with this, I'm going to show you how great it is. But let's take it apart like I did the other one. So it's straight away, you've got the same mechanism. Unscrew the cap, loosen the back nut, pull out your, your, your needle. You can see mine's a little bit dirty because I've been using it earlier. Right, let me see if I can point out this needle. So, yeah, I can. As you can see, it's machined. Number one, this is a much harder quality metal. And it has two machine marks. One where it starts to taper here. And then we're right, one right at the end where it tapers in again. This is something that is not on the Neo. Something that I noticed as soon as I opened it. And subsequently leads to an incredibly fine point on this brush. I can do things with this brush that are blowing my mind. The, the more I'm using it, the more I'm learning about it. So let's slide that back in nice and gently when you do it. And at the front, it's the same as the other Iowatas. They're all pretty much the same like this so far. This little part comes off um, with your little spanner. You don't want to ever over tighten these and you only really want to be taking this off if you're going for a deep clean or you found some sort of clog that you can't remove with blowback or normal cleaning process. That as well I'll go through. So this one, this is called the Iowa Revolution HPCR and this retails at £115. So um, the Neo is 68, so it's not quite double, but it's not that far off double. 
However, this does feel like double the brush. I'm not gonna lie to you. We kind of get to it straight away. I love this brush. I deeply, deeply love this brush. Um, and price point wise, your next jump up from here is huge. It's a huge amount more money. So any of you guys watching this video thinking about getting into airbrushing, these two brushes are a really great way to enter with a really capable bit of kit not breaking the bank. I think the next price point, you're looking at the three £350 mark for the next brush up. So that's a huge amount more money. This isn't a huge amount. But certainly the Neo is a great way to start without, oh, I've just spent £120. I don't even know if I'm going to enjoy airbrushing. So I've just screwed on my little quick release. This doesn't come as part of the airbrush, but is available again from Weekend Warlords. And this allows me to attach straight into my air hose. I have a water trap. This is also another part, Iowata Cell. You can buy this separately. Um, this catches water at this end. I've also got one on my compressor end. I just like to be double careful with water coming through the airline. It can ruin your work. So I'm gonna put that in. I'm gonna check I've got air. This can be a bit funny. My hose is a bit old. There we go. All right, so I'm running at about 15 pounds of pressure at the moment. Um, this brush doesn't need a huge amount of pressure to work, uh, especially when you want to start doing fine stuff. I do run a little bit more when I'm base coating big areas. So the first thing I'm going to do, see what I'm going to do, I'm going freehand. I'm going crazy. Last time I did a uh, set of stencils and worked over those, showing you the control of the brush. This is even more controlled. And I'm going to do like this crazy lightning -y type stuff because it's just fun and looks awesome. And it lets me show you the different spreads of the paint. So I'm going to go from like a wide feathered to a really tight, almost pencil line. So I'm starting off with this darker blue. This is an ultramarine. This is a Vallejo Gamer. I, I live by this paint. I'm sure there are other great airbrush acrylic paints out there, but this is what I use. So the first thing I'm gonna do is these set of lines, and these are gonna be a broader set of strokes. So let's... Um... Now, I always take off my air guard on the front of my brush. Now, this allows me I find less air reverberates around the air guard so I don't get any any blow and it also allows me to clean the tip of this brush so as I'm painting I will want to clean the tip of this brush um, you won't get me my cup to wash my brush in I think it's on the table I'm just speaking to my editor his name's John he does all my videos with me so let's get me old man glasses on because I'm blind without them and I'm just going to test spray onto my hand there we go I've got colour. So I'm going to start at the top and this is going to be a much broader set of lines just to show you the softer this has got an absolute gorgeous button feel so I'm, I'm releasing my finger ever so slightly and getting less air, less pain, all of that. So I can change what's happening just by what my finger's doing without changing air or anything like that. So I'm just working on a, a kind of a rough pattern at the moment. So bear with me if I go a bit quiet. You can see these softer, wispy edges, there's harder lines, and this is all controllable from your brush. It's got a, a really lovely feel at the actual button end. Very, very controllable. It goes where you want it to go. So already, I need to have a little clean off on the tip of my brush. I'll just show you that under camera. So it's a slightly moistened brush just having a clean. This is called dry tip. You get that whenever you're airbrushing. Thank you, John. Something just happened there, John. Okay. So let's get a few more of these lines in.
So I've started off there, and as you can see, I've got these softer mid to dark blue lines going on. So that's showing you it's still very controllable. I have different levels of opacity because just of the control at the, at the actual the, uh, uh, the button end. And now I have a little clean out. So when I clean, it's a really, really simple thing to do. I just remove the cap and I use a squirty bottle, just the water. I've got this, this jug here that you can't see just off camera. And I'm just gonna squeeze this into my paint reservoir. A couple of squirts and the excess paint has been removed. I give it a little scrub with my brush, a little mix round. Any of you seeing me doing in my videos will have seen me do that a million times. Let's just give that a squirt out, drop my brush, come back with you. And I'm just gonna check my tip again because it's covered in paint, give that a clean off. So I'm gonna step up now, I'm gonna go to a lighter blue. This again is Game Air. And this is electric blue. Let's get that on the camera for you. So I'm still gonna be a little bit feathered and soft, but a little bit tighter. I'm gonna go through another two colors after this, a uh, wolf gray and then white, and they're gonna be much, much tighter. So now, let's get this. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna work over the lines I've already gone. have a, a spray out on my hand there we go it just lets me clear out the bit of water I had on it can see I can start to I can start to play so I can draw with it and I can waft some of that lighter color over it I know this can be a little it can get lost a little bit with the camera because of the way the brush works but if you start to see in some of those bits have a little clean of my needle this will happen a lot get used to doing that when you're airbrushing and now I'm going to carry on again and now I can build up stronger colors with the same just by going back over but um, there's still a few bits here I want to I want to build up before I go double time So, you can start to see what's happening. Now I'm gonna go back over where I was, because now I'll show you, this is how you can be really quite heavy, the closer you get. 
and then you can soften those out as well. A lot of control in this brush, changing the way it delivers the paint. So the more you paint, the more that tip's going to get clogged. So you need to need to keep cleaning that tip off. If you ever get to a point where your brush is not giving you paint, test it on your hand, test it on a glove. Don't test it on where you're working. There we go. We're back. So you can put some really, really pretty, pretty detail. And this is still, we've still got two more layers. So we're going to get even more intricate with it. It's a great, great little brush. So you can already, you can start to see what's happening here. I mean, you've got some really subtle little lines going on, some stronger stuff, all the different blues. And this is me rushing, right? This is me doing like a quick little show for you guys. When you guys are painting, you can labor and take ages over this stuff. You can also get yourself in a much more comfortable position. Remember, when I'm working on camera, I'm not in my favorite position. I'm working to, camera point so I'm often having to put myself in a in a place where I'm not really 100% comfortable You can see those beautiful. I mean, like, it, it's just, it's a pleasure to work with a brush like this. It is really is a pleasure. You can get right, right in close start to see so I can start to really add some crazy crazy little detail let's give that another little clean off again so that microscopic bit of dry paint will really affect it remember we're talking about microns here so dry, dry paint will really affect what's coming out of your brush. And 
let's have another little one from up here. I'm not even watching what I'm doing, I'm watching this, the actual monitor now. This is a new experience. Let's go this way now. So a little bit of paint on my brush, stopping what I'm doing. Right, so, you kind of get the idea of where I'm going with that. I'm going to jump up a colour. Now I'm going to start being really, really intricate. I'm not going to do as much. I'm just going to start picking out some of these lighter areas here, these concentrated points where the colour would be most intense. Let's just give that another quick clean out. So colour changes should be really fast, cleaning your brushes. A lot of people worry about cleaning your brush. This is all you need to do. Fresh water. Do not blow through your brush until you've cleaned your actual paint reservoir. Normally two flushes and a scrub would do it. I've got clean, then you can give it a little blow because you just just clean water. If you start trying to blow through diluted paint, you'll get you'll make it worse for yourself. So as you're cleaning that, because as you've scrubbed, you've you've released little dry particles, and that'll get stuck in the nozzle. So I'm stepping up to wolf grey. So this is very light grey, bluey grey. I think it's bluey grey. I'm colour blind, so. Um, and don't overfill your cups. If you're only using a little bit of paints, I just put two drops then, two, three drops. Because I know I'm not going to be using a lot. I'm going to blow out on my hand. Because the first bit's going to be just the water from cleaning. Clean off of my needle. Old man glasses. Alright, so now I'm going to concentrate on... Can you see? Can you see how fine that is? It's like insanely fine. Look at it. It's like I'm drawing it with a pencil, but I'm not. I'm using a spray gun. When you're working really fine at this point, the needles will get uh, clogged quite quickly because you're putting a lot of air and very little paint through your brush. Don't be a stinker. Yeah, so she's, she's just...
There we go. So now you can start to see the effect that's building. Now I could probably do with a little bit of paint retarder in this because it is drying very, very quickly on my needle. Look at that, it looks real. It's starting to really, really come alive. Imagine how hard that would be to try and achieve with a, with a, a, a hand brush. Right. a little bit more and then I'll jump to the white because you guys are getting the idea without me needing to uh, paint the whole of this bit of paper. Ooh. We all have a loss of control at time, that was my fault, I overpressed. Let's uh, add a little bit here. A little bit more at the bottom and then I'm going to switch to white for the final couple of bits.
Let's jump up to a white for the last one. That grey was being a little bit problematic. That was the paint. It was a little bit thick. Could have done with a bit of thinning. But the more you paint, the more you'll understand that, the more you'll get used to it. But this paint, this uh, brush really doesn't mind the thicker paints. You should always be mindful a little bit. But um, it certainly can cope with these slightly thicker paints straight out of the pot. Let's give this a good wash out for the white. There's white. I'm only going to be doing little bits. Let's give her a blow. <laughs> My trusty director has found me some thinner. It's a bit late now. Hopefully this white won't be as much of a pain. One, two, three. Just a couple of drops in there. I'm gonna blow this out on my hand. Just giving that a little wash through. And now this is Right, I'm not going to lie to you, I've got a little blockage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a quick strip down and I'm going to show you what I do when I get a blockage. Now what this is, I know this from experience, I've got a little bit of dry paint, paint just at the back of my needle and it's affecting what's coming through my gum. And I can't get a proper result while that's happening. So this is what's going to happen. This will happen to you when you're painting and this is how quick and easy this brush is to break down. So I've got out all my excess. I'm giving it a quick blow through. Now, back off. Needle out. Let's give that needle a wipe. Yeah, I can already see. There you go. On the tip of my finger, there's a tiny bit of dry paint. You see this little spot right near my thumb? That's hard paint. That's all you need in a brush to start affecting your paint flow. So now to check that's clean all the way through, wipe this off, be careful with your needles, put your needle safe. Let's open this end part. And I'm gonna take off this inner nozzle. And mine's already been loosened and I never over tighten. I tend to not use my spanner to tighten up. So I'm just gonna take this off, tiny little part. It seems to be clean in there, nearly lost it. Let's have a look in here. Right, so I was just checking if I had any dry paint in here. And in here looks fine. It looked like I got it out straight away. It was on my came out with my needle. So let's just put that back in. Just finger tight. Needle in. Be gentle when you put your needle in. Tighten the end cap, front cover on, and then my back cover on. I'm going to put just a touch of water, just to check. Yeah, it already feels better. Spot of white. So the more you use your brushes, the more you'll be able to just feel it and you'll go, she's not right, I know she's not right. And it generally isn't the machine. Yeah, there we go. It's generally the paint. So let's go back. Much better.
this is actually slightly off focus for you guys, right? But that line is really tiny that I've just put in here. see I can start to <laughs> we all make mistakes it's okay easily easily cleaned up Right, I think that, that that's enough there. Gives you a great idea what the brush is capable of. I've had a couple of slip ups myself and that's more me than anything else. Lovely. You can see the brush is, is, is eminently controllable, um, all about your paint mix, but you can really take this to any level you want to. In fact, you know what I'm going to try and do is I'd like to just try and lift this up slightly because I feel we're slightly out of focus. So you can see how tiny some of those lines are. Look at it. I mean, they're like ridiculous. I, I'm, not, I'm sure you'd struggle to actually draw such a thin line with an actual pencil or a pen so in conclusion um, the the revolution is hands and feet above the the neo but the neo is an incredibly good entry brush they're both worth having so there'd be nothing wrong with owning one of each and using the neo for like base coating and for bigger easier areas and then swapping over to your revolution for the harder stuff i've certainly painted ships where normally i would have masked up certain things and i've been able to get away just by hand it has that much control it's well worth the 115 pounds um saying that the neo is well worth the 68 but there is a marked difference you definitely definitely if you if you lived with the neo for six months and then suddenly you were given the revolution you would be like that's a much more controllable finer brush so as a jump up i'm going to give it nine out of ten nothing gets ten out of ten because i need to get a shoulder massage if they want a ten out of ten at the same time uh, it pretty much hit the same as the Neo rating wise, but a different price point. So you are paying more, but I still think you're getting nine out of 10 for the money you're paying for the for the airbrush itself so that's the two airbrushes we reviewed it's the Iowa Neo and the Iowa Revolution HPCR it's a whole mouthful but they're both available from Weekend Warlords web store which is www.weekendwarlords.co.uk please jump on have a look um, get out there and watch some more of my painting videos and hopefully use some of the techniques in those videos to help you with your models I hope this helps you kind of decide about what airbrush to get or whether you're going to invest or not um, but until then, until the next review, until I can afford the £300 brush, um, 
catch you again soon. One love.